Why is he taking one? Oh, this is my friend Peter Griffin. He recently discovered he was black. He doesn't look very black to me. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, 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 judge me not by the color of my skin. Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. So today is going to be kind of a quick run through of one of my past videos that somebody brought to my attention because of the title. It is called Black Women Are Toxic! Exclamation point. I react to Tommy Sotomayor reacting to Young Pharaoh and Tasha Kay. So this is a reaction to a person doing a reaction to another video. And the video that it's about was entitled Black Women Are Toxic. And it was on Tasha Kay's channel originally because like I said, she talked with Young Pharaoh about this subject, about black women being toxic. So for the person that thought that I was just trying to come at black women all kind of different ways of crazy, you're wrong. The title of the video has to do with the content of the video, but see if you actually watch, actually watch the video, you would know that. But all you do is judge people based on their skin tone, their ethnicity, and the title. And that's a very ignorant way to go about life. Very willfully ignorant. You know why? Because you should never judge a book by its cover without reading it. Just like you shouldn't judge a video or the person making the video without actually watching the material. It just makes sense. This video is 19 minutes and 26 seconds. We're going to get through every last minute of it, even if I have some interruptions from the little ones. I've got my cup of coffee here. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're here. Leave me a comment and tell me what you think. Let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. And for those of you who are into music like I am, that beat is from a song called... It's just a really good song about like this dude who is dating a girl who doesn't appreciate him. So today's video features one of my favorite YouTubers of all time, who unfortunately, due to YouTube guidelines, was actually banned from YouTube altogether. And it's very upsetting to someone like me who enjoyed this person's content. Now, granted, can I agree with everything he says? Absolutely not. Do I agree with everything every YouTuber I like says? Of course not. But there's a lot that's pretty funny, and there's a lot that I can agree with. And one thing I can say is the guy is absolutely hilarious. And when I say YouTube is missing a great person, I mean it. And I wish YouTube would change its mind about him because, to be honest, I really miss watching him. And I'm aware that he has an OnlyFans account, but... And not only does he have an OnlyFans account, he has a Rumble account, which I will link in the description. Am I interested in watching someone's OnlyFans considering that there's pornographic material on there? Absolutely not. <laughs> so I'm gonna stick with what I know and YouTube's the way to go. Let's go ahead. I hope Tommy Sotomayor isn't still making that kind of stuff. Like, I just thought he was a little too old to be, you know, making videos like that to begin with. <laughs> That's just my personal opinion, but... <laughs> to each his own. <laughs> and tune into this a snippet that someone got from one of his recent OnlyFans videos and um, hear what he's got to say about another YouTuber named Young Pharaoh who he had a run-in with a few years back. This is sure to bring us some laughs, shall we? All I know is that Young Pharaoh apparently went from saying the black woman is God to saying the black woman is toxic. And I've been saying this for years. And it's funny, all these years I've been saying things I've always had a hope that there would be just one that would show up and show different. And I realize I'm 47 years old and they're all the same. It don't matter if they your kid, somebody else's kid. It don't matter if they in their 20s, 30s, 40s. It don't matter if uh, 50s. It don't matter if they have zero education or if they lawyers. They just hoes and they like being hoes. And all these defenders of black women, what usually happens is you end up getting yourself hurt. You end up getting yourself embarrassed. You end up having your life taken and all this stuff. And I know everybody gonna get mad at me for saying it, but I'm sorry. All right, I think it might be working. Let's see what this nigga's talking about. Come on, let's go. All right, Ooh, let's do this. My childhood was great until my uh, the, the black women in my family pushed my. Oh, don't don't try yeah, to do no, this. No, 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 I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. You gaslighting. You gaslighting now. I'm doing that. You gaslighting. Because if the same thing keeps happening to you. You have to take a step back and take a look. Listen, all, the, all, the, all the black women in my family were toxic. My okay. grandma my grandma used to get drunk and wave her shotgun at us. Okay. Toxic. I had another aunt used to buy all my cousins freezes and candies, never bought me shit. Okay. Toxic. Used to let my other cousins play the game, never let me play the game. Toxic. Okay, so we're two minutes and 47 seconds in the video, and all we have heard is the word toxic. 
And so clearly that's why the title is the way it is. <laughs> it's a shocking title that gets people to click, like, what is she talking about? And then you click and then you actually watch and then you hear what the people are saying. They're saying black women is, are toxic. You don't hear the biracial light-skinned woman in the video say anything about black women being toxic. It's the black men in the video, the actual unambiguous black men. You wouldn't guess them for anything besides being black. And they are the ones that said black women are toxic. I am simply here just reacting to it and yet have said nothing about black women being toxic yet. And yet somehow I'm made out to be a bad person because of the title. See, this is why you should watch because you're easily proven wrong simply by clicking the actual video. Every black woman in my life that I've ever been in the care of has them filthy. And I was a kid. And you just now realize that. I'm well, she does have a valid point when she says you're just now realizing that because, again, a few years back when Tommy Sotomayor was saying pretty much the same thing about black women, he was saying that Tommy should be beat up in the middle of the street. Everybody should go against Tommy. He should be slapped on sight. All of this, you know, threatening violence against the man simply for saying that black women could probably do something to try to be a little bit easier to get along with or just be more likable in general. And she's saying, you're just now realizing that <laughs> because you went from saying the black woman is literally God to now you're saying that black women are toxic. And I get it. Like we've seen this time and time again where the black man gets to a certain status in life and he either A, stops dealing with black women altogether or only deals with a certain caliber of black women. And the women that he's chosen to have children with in the past, all the baby mamas who were black are thrown to the wayside treated as if they're nothing when they were praised in the beginning, uplifted for their strong, aggressive behavior. Now they're looked down upon. So basically I was calling young Pharaoh out. I'm not even going at black women right now. Not in this video. Literally, I'm like kind of low key standing up for black women. I'm like, young Pharaoh, you used to say black women were God, you know, back in the day when you were trying to build your channel. Now that you done built your channel off of, the love and the likes and the subscribing from black women now you can turn around and say because you have other followers other races and you've been exposed to and probably done dated and squirted around in other races now that you're no longer in the need of their affirmations and praise and so now you don't praise them anymore now the truth comes out the truth is you were just saying that to get your name where it was but in reality you knew that the black woman in your life wasn't doing you right you just dealt with it at the time because maybe that's all you were exposed to and thusly that's why he was on Tasha K saying what he was saying and she checked him for it. So really right now I'm defending black women. And like I said, the majority of my videos aren't like that. More, more than likely on my videos, you will find me defending black men. And it's not that I'm like uh, against black women. It's just, I'm for what's right. I'm for what's right at whatever particular time. And in this video, to me, it was funny that young Pharaoh, a person who started his you know, a career on YouTube or whatever off of Black Women Are God to just be turning around and saying something so totally opposite, it needed to be addressed. But again, you have people who will look at the title and my fair skin and assume all the worst things about me and it's stupid and it's dumb and that's why I'm here to just debunk it. Like I'm straight about to watch my own video and for all of you who think it's weird, just understand that it's because people want to judge me and not actually watch my material. So we go watch it and we go prove that I'm not who these people try to say I am. And other races of women are uplifted. I mean, we've seen it so many times. It's like guys get a little bit of money and it's just like that Kanye West line from the song Gold Digger. And when he get on, he leave your ass for a white girl. And it ain't just white women anymore. It's Asian women. It's pretty much any other race of woman, period. Like, I mean, and um, as a biracial woman, I can, I can somewhat relate, but not 100% because even biracial women are looked at in the black community a little bit better than black women, but some of us are still in the category of like the typical black female. So, especially when it comes to statistics, I can recognize the privilege that's there, but I also still understand that when it comes down to statistics, what's on paper, what I have to check on my box when it comes to descriptions or when it comes to a census, they're gonna consider me a black woman. You bet your lucky charms. But at the end of the day, Black women who look like Tasha K are the ones who receive the brunt of most of the jokes and the backlash. I didn't realize that. That's why I don't f with none of us. So who are you fucking? I stay now? loyal. Who am I fucking? Yeah, who are you fucking now? Black, black women, women, white women? Black, I've never had sex with a white woman in my life. I'm 28 years old. But oh wow, 
he's 28 years old never had sex with a white woman in his life who believes that like who believes that <laughs> you've gotten to this level in your life and you've not taste the rainbow come on man you ain't lived until you've taste the rainbow i'm just saying i can see what i meant when i inserted the taste the rainbow clip it was like you haven't lived until you've experienced other races or taste the rainbow that's out there that's what i meant by that but now that I think about it, it almost comes off as if I was trying to say he was gay, but I definitely wasn't. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell black women about themselves. Who the f is black women to think that we can't tell them about themselves? When they got a problem with us, they let. Y'all hear this shit, right? Y'all hear how these niggas turn around? Now, we gotta, we gotta remember, this is the man that said he was gonna kill me and beat me up and all that. This is him. This is the same cat. Was gonna kill me and beat me up. Now he's repeating what I said. Now he's just repeating what I said. He was going to kill me because of what I said about black women. Now he's repeating it. And I think that's why I did the video too, because it's like one of those things where Tommy was kicked off of YouTube for supposedly the things that he says about black women. But now you have this turnaround of black men who agree and who low-key have stolen Tommy Sotomayor's sayings without giving him the credit where it's due. Like I use a lot of Tommy Sotomayor material and quotes and things like that. What do I always do? Mention the man's name, show his channel or link it in the description, something like that. I always give people the credit where it is due. You don't want to just use somebody's stuff and not give them at least the credit for it. So it's like one of those things where all these black men were coming to the cape for black women when Tommy was saying it. But now that they realize, oh, well, there's a lane. There's 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 money to be made in this lane of, uh, I guess, the black manosphere. They jumped on that train now. And it's like, you can't do that, young girl. Your name started out as black women as God. I'm sorry. I don't care what you say. I'm gonna always look at you as a simp because that's what you said in the beginning. And now that you've made it to where you've made it, now all of a sudden you want to go back on what you said. No, you're a simp. You always be a simp because your baby mama's proven. it. The fact that you gave them children, even though they weren't your wives. The world, they don't just let us know. They let the world know. They come up to your job, try to humiliate you. But why we can't say sweetheart? You need to be a little bit more feminine. So how did your aunts, your mom, cousins, how did that affect your life coming up? Because I've had toxic uncles. They used to get drunk, but it never affected my life. How did it affect your life? To the point where... You feel as if almost every black woman is toxic. Okay, right, actually, I don't feel every black woman is toxic. I feel black women in America are toxic. Mm. I you, about you haven't seen any African, seen African women. They might, they, might, they, <laughs> they might be, but I talked to some women from Africa. Okay. And they don't act like that. Okay. You so, can't generalize all black women. I'm not, I'm people. not, but I'm saying well, that. You can understand that we're taught that rhetoric to think that our people are a certain way. And that's just surprising coming from you. Black? No, I grew up in the ghetto. I'm not going to lie to me. But you grew up in the ghetto. My sister, my sister, my sister is, my is toxic. Okay. Black women, listen, here's the thing. We got to share the blame here. For how many years has it been? This ain't shit, black men, I, 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 and I, black women, they never in my once heard, never once in their life. I can agree that it's definitely not all, but there is a good majority of black women who are toxic. And I'll go ahead and I'll keep referring to the person that was in my life. The last video that I did a video on, that person is a black woman and she's very toxic because she thrives off of creating drama. Like she thrives off of starting crap. Anytime you're that type of black woman, then you're toxic. And there's a lot that are like that. It's definitely, like I said, not all. Because there's definitely some black women who have it going on and they got things to do and places to be and things like that nature. They ain't got four or five hours to spend online on a stranger. <laughs> you know? Like literally, they don't have time for it. But the ones that do make it their literal goal to try to intimidate, to try to scare you into, I don't even know, like, I don't even understand the point of threatening somebody with so-called receipts and stuff. It's like you just want to stir up drama. You want to stir up, try to be the person that exposes somebody, but you're not exposing anything when the person like clearly says it, like bold face in the camera, like, yeah, I agree with this mess. <laughs> and what? Like out of all the years I've been on the internet, my first lecture was the black woman is God. Let's not forget that. So I, I've been repping, but I came out with black women betrayed me. Now why little boosted tit is so big. <laughs> See, that's the time, the classic Tommy Sotomayor I miss right there. Like the fact that he just said that, that that she looks like little boozy. I mean, come on, that's classic funny right there. Because I mean, come on. <laughs> I even pulled up Lil Boosie's picture to put next to Tasha K's to just show, like, yeah, she do look like Lil Boosie. She really does, especially with her hair like this and just her facial features, the skin tone, everything matches. Like she could be this man's like whole sister, and that could be her brother. <laughs>
But that's the type of stuff that Tommy does. He will be able to find somebody that you look like celebrity wise. That's the total opposite sex. And it really be true. And it's so funny. And that's what I mean by Tommy Sotomayor being hilarious. And to me, that's like good, harmless, funny. And we'll keep watching. She does kind of look like Lil Boosie. I mean, if you think about it, like, you know, and that's the kind of stuff, like I said, that I laughed at. Those kind of harmless jokes where it's not really like, it shouldn't really be that offensive. Like, because anybody could, you know, say that you look like something. Somebody could get up here and say, you look like Michael Jackson to me. And, you know, that may very well be true to them, you know? So it's like, sometimes, or some other celebrity that's a guy that's light skinned, you know, with long hair or something. They might find a picture and insert it next to me right now. Like, I don't know, but you have to be able to laugh at yourself and you have to be able to laugh at others. That's what comedy is about. It's not just about like, you know, being careful, like being, most comedians say things that someone could deem offensive, but they will have an audience full of people, auditorium full of people cracking up. Why? Because most of the time people go in without a defensive attitude. But when you're extremely insecure as it is, and then you get around somebody who you think got a little better than you, that junk pisses you off. And I, 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 like I said, I can see why some people may hate on me, you know, because they may deem my situation is slightly better than theirs, or they may look at the life that I may have had. They don't even know, but they just assume uh, the privilege that I have had. And maybe I have had some, but I guarantee you, I wasn't born with no platinum spoon in my mouth. I'm not a Paris Hilton of the world. So you need to quit tripping and just let your girl have what she got and you run whatever lane you got and be the best that you can be in whatever Yay! lane that you have. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody is going to have it all, but you know, where I may fail in some areas, you may succeed. And where you fail in some areas, I may succeed. We all have our great points and we all have our down points. We're all human. Sometimes, you know, you got to be able to laugh at yourself. Sometimes you got to be able to laugh at others, you know, and, uh, Tommy Sotomayor is freaking hilarious. I don't care what any of you say. I miss him, and I wish he was back on YouTube. Uh, people keep talking about something. When I was 17 years old, I made $40,000. Kids ain't stupid. And I said, he's not stupid. Okay. I made $1.4 million last year on my own with no team. But you're not looking at what you're doing. That's not true. You had 600,000 followers plus more. Yeah, sir, yeah, but the black and, and you, not, the, you, not the black community. What? Not the majority Aaron, of the black community. Aaron, really? No, yeah, really. Really? Yeah, really. So who was following you? Yeah, really. A lot about? of a lot of a lot of mixed races of people, but the average person. They say I would call. I I would, I would call the average person right now in the hood, and they, and they all say the same thing. Damn, bro, I've been doing this now. That wouldn't pay you that much attention. I see what you're doing. That's how I get it now. No, I, 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 I'm gonna have to as someone on the outside that has been following you for about three, four years now. I'm gonna have to disagree with that. You really think Listen, black people did not put you on? The specific, no. Nah, I didn't say that. I put myself on. No. You how did I get on? You can't say how did I get on? How did I get on? Where'd you get the money for for the trip? Okay, and then this this is where I kind of agree with Tasha K because like I said, it's awfully funny that you would start your YouTube channel off of Black Women Are God. And now that you've made it to where you are, you've made $1.5 million or whatever, now you've taken it back and you've, you've gone so far as to say Black women are toxic. And it's because of that scandal that he had where he was uh, getting like a domestic violence charge put on him by one of his baby mamas or one of his girls or whatever to him. I don't even know. I think it was a baby mama, if I remember correctly, because this was probably about a year or so ago. But it's awfully funny how now they're the ones betraying you. Um, maybe you were in a relationship with somebody. You betrayed them. They got jealous. They went ham on you. And then you went ham back. And then she called the cops. And then, I mean, let's just be honest about it. You know what I mean? Let's be real about what probably happened. You was cheating. She ain't like it. And even though she probably knew from the get-go that you were that kind of doggish dude. You know, it, that's why literally the minute somebody cheats on you, be done with them. Just be done with them. Don't even give them another chance because... Honestly, cheating is like one of those things that's just going to get worse and worse. It has like a snowball effect almost. So once you find out somebody's cheating on you, be done with it because it's just going to lead to domestic violence because think about it, that ultimate betrayal makes you so angry inside. You'll either try to revenge cheat, which could get you, you know, beat up or something, or you try to put your hands on somebody because you're so angry. Now you get locked up, they get locked up and who's taking care of the kids and all this. Just leave people alone once they cheat on you. Just seriously. How did I get on? I work for it. How? I work for it. Doing lectures and traveling. Not scamming or nothing. But let me ask you. How did I get on? Well, let's talk about it. Okay? Right. Because, I mean, if you have presented yourself one way to your children's mother, but yet you're... No, she's not. She's she been on traveling with me. She's been on a block. Well, both, both of your baby mothers know exactly... I met my baby. I met my son's mother when I was traveling. Okay. And she, she gonna lie right now on the internet. See, this is what it is, Tasha. Okay, so he met his first baby mama when he was trapping. See what I mean, black women? Like, we have got to get to the point where... Well, I'm not even going to say we. 
because I'm not in that category anymore. I'm going to speak to other unmarried black women who are baby mamas because I'm a married woman now. So I'm not in that category anymore. I'm not better than anybody because I've been a baby mama, but I can't say we because I'm not in that category anymore. But what I will say is black women have to get to the point where they're like, no, where you're not dealing with thuggy dudes anymore. You have to get to the point where you're looking for the guys who have legitimate jobs, legitimate careers, who have time in a place, who have a retirement, a 401k property that they own. You have to get into guys like that and you have to let them know that you will not have any children until they put rings on your finger, okay? You have to let them know that you're better than just being someone's baby mama when they're on the bottom. Because guess what? When they get up, just like the young Pharaoh and so many others, you're just gonna be the ghetto baby mama who decided to sleep with a trap and have a baby by him. And now you're looked down upon. Whereas before you were his queen, you were his black queen. The reason I just let all of that come out is because I wanted to be known that I do care about the black community. I'm not just making videos for the views. Like I can make videos on anything that I wanted. I can make silly videos. I can make cooking videos. I can make workout videos. I can make family vlog videos. And I do all of that stuff too. I do whatever interests me. And the reason I do my family stuff is for, for our family so that we can go back and look at you know how our family has grown and it's changed from over the years. I started my channel in like 2020. I can go back that far and literally see videos of my daughter who's now in school as a tiny little baby. You know what I'm saying? It's just a click. You know, I don't have to go through an old phone or an old album or anything. I can just be on YouTube and be like, click. I feel like looking at baby photos or I feel like looking at us a few years ago and see where we came from. You know what I'm saying? And how our lives have changed. That's the whole point. Or, you know, special events, things that we have done, places that we have visited. You know, I try to keep all of that. It's like a memory. You know what I'm saying? Some people scrapbook. I vlog. That's my version of a scrapbook. You know, so obviously I care. I put out videos that mean something to me. And in this moment right here, I'm literally speaking to black women from my heart. Like I've been there, done that. I've, I had a baby daddy and I'm not going to say that my baby daddy was some kind of thuggy street dude. He definitely wasn't. But it's like, I know that guys like out, guys like that exist out there and black women will date them and give them a chance, give them a baby. And then they never get a ring out of it. They never get a husband out of it. They just end up with more children. And so I'm trying to talk to the black women that, you know, maybe watching the video and who may have either had a child or they haven't yet. And I'm trying to convince them that, you know what? It doesn't have to end here. You can definitely turn your life around and change your situation just like I did. And I try to be an example. And so what's wrong with that? You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, to, for the life of me, I can't see what's wrong with that. But you see, when people just judge you off of what you look like and what they think the life that you have had or the privilege they think that you have had over them, they get mad about it. And it's like, no, it has nothing to do with looks. Whatever I have in my life has more to do with who I am than what I am. Please believe that. Da, 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 da. Now he's looking at other races of women and thinking they're better than you, uplifting them because they're more feminine than you. They, you know, supposedly mesh better in like higher class situations than you. And you're the ones not being married. You're the ones just being baby mamas. And you have to get to the point where you say, no, uh-uh. That's not what I want for myself. That's what my mother did. That's what my grandmother did. That's what my sisters have done. My aunties, my grandma, you know, everybody in my family, all these women in my family have been nothing but baby mamas. And you have to want different for yourself. You have to break that generational curse. Stop giving yourselves up and giving the best of yourself and risking your life. Because believe it or not, every time you get pregnant and give birth to a child, you're risking your life. And so stop doing that for a man that's not willing to give you his last name for a man that's not willing to share his home with you or his assets, stop. Stop being a baby mama. That's the best thing you can do for yourself, your children, your daughters. Have a little more self-worth. Stop just being a breeder. Let's just call it what it is. Get a ring on your finger first. And maybe that's offensive to some people. I could definitely hear how maybe hearing from a light-skinned married woman that that's offensive that you would say that. But you cannot argue the, the validity in what I just said. It may not have been something that tickles your eardrum. It may not have been that baby shower for a 16-year-old. But what it is is actually the truth. And sometimes the truth needs to be said whether it's hurtful or not. Then these men will stop acting like when they get a little bit of money, they're so much better than you. And you're just some bottom barrel chick. Stop thinking that somehow because you're just a baby mama and you're maybe getting a child support check, that means something because it doesn't. Like imagine a totem pole. 
right? You know how they have heads on top of each other. Black women are like literally at the bottom. Then you have, you know, other races of women, you know, leading up to the top and whatever they consider to be the most attractive is the top female and then goes down. But black women, you have the bottom place so that when dudes don't have any money, you're their first pick. And you have to stop allowing yourself to be that. I'm not saying don't date guys that, you know, are in the process of getting their lives together. No, what I'm saying is stop bringing children into the world with guys like that. Make them put a ring on you first. Wait until you guys have property. Wait until you own something. And another thing I want to add is the how we get rid of the stigma of being the bottom of the totem pole is by seeing ourselves as more valuable and being like the other races of women who wait till marriage and who require an actual wedding or, you know, just, just some, you know, form of, they require a marriage. They require me living with you in the home and, and you as a man doing your part as the man in the relationship. Most other race women, they require that. That's why you hear about those passport bros. They don't go overseas and just get more baby mamas. No, they go overseas and find a wife. Notice the difference. They go over there to find the wife, but they smash and just have their fun with the women here. Why? It's because something about the women here makes it harder to deal with. Maybe we're just too combative or we're just too hell bent on being for the streets and dressing certain ways that attract more men than we need to. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's a level of modesty that wives have versus street women. Before you bring children into the world so that you can stop being this girl. Literally, that's the best advice I can give because the stigma is already there and you may not want to hear it, but believe it or not, the stigma is already there about you. And so what you can do is begin to change it by stop falling into those statistics and stop being just a baby mama. I'm just saying. These middle class women, and I'm saying middle class, because my son mom, chick the wagga, white people. She, now this is unbeknownst to me because I've never in my life been a woman beater. Never, never. I put that on my eternal soul. But you want to beat your baby mother's ass. I can say that. You know, to hear you preach for so many years about black empowerment, black people being successful, and the black woman is God, and yet you sit up here and say, I want to beat my baby mother's ass. That's with a black woman. <laughs> it, 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 hits, it hits different. I hate to it. But it hits You are a public figure. I don't care. You're, you're not Joe Blow in the street. I am a, you're human. I'm a self made. Sure I'm a self made young black So if you're self made, you should know how to handle your emotions. I, and, I'm, and I'm handling it. Dragging your baby mother out of the house? If you want to change people, not change yourself. If you want people to wake up. Why do people always try to tell you, and it's usually black women, love to tell you how your message can be more palatable? You know, more people would listen to you if you did it this way. More people would listen to you if you did it this way. More people would listen to you if you did it this way. And they only tell you this because they don't like what you're doing. They want they want to tell you how you should get more people. Why do you want me to get more people when I know you only like me? Now, one thing I can say about that comment is maybe if Tommy Sotomayor didn't say some of the things that he said, he probably wouldn't be banned off of YouTube by now. But what's, and what's really frustrating and infuriating to me is you have other YouTubers who are probably a percentage of renownness, if you will, I'm making up words now, but they have a percentage of the clout that Tommy Sotomayor have, but their main message is preaching nothing but hate against light-skinned people or biracial people or whatever. And and, suppose and we have seen that on this channel too. I've done reaction videos to other people who constantly make videos about light-skinned privilege and light-skinned people and how the struggle is real for a darker-skinned person. And they're allowed to say all kind of hateful, mean, and nasty things about light-skinned women. But the minute you say Black women are toxic, even though it may be freaking true, that's when all of a sudden you're a racist because you're part white. That makes you a racist for saying that. You're, you're pearly things. What? Pearly things couldn't walk a day in my black shoes, okay? It was an activism, blah, blah, blah. Their whole channel is literally about that. And they're allowed to just be online for years, ranting, raving, cursing, spewing nothing but racist hate against, mind you, their own kind, just people who are lighter than them. And they're allowed to just put that pathetic information as if people are really going to watch you just scream at yourself like a weirdo in the camera. Well, yeah, you're allowed to do that. But this man who actually entertained people and put time, effort, and energy into his jokes and into his videos, who actually was able to gain hundreds of thousands of followers, possibly even a million, had his channels not been 
destroyed and taken down so many times, he's not allowed to do that. And it makes you really wonder why. Like, it's just crazy. But I mean, I, I honestly know that Tommy Sotomayor has said things that were negative about biracial people too. He's said things that were bad about white people, Chinese people, Mexican people. He's talked about literally everybody, not just black women, but because black women are like the hardest people in the world to deal with and the most sensitive yet at the same time, you know, they get their way because they yell and scream and holler and throw fits if they don't. So yeah, exactly, exactly. And I believe Tommy Sotomayor used to say, and I don't, you know, think it's right to say it this way, but it does kind of make sense when you think about it. Black women sometimes act like the retarded kid in class where they throw their jello bowl at the wall and people are just like, oh, that's okay, calm down, you know? But other races have to like get in trouble for it. Even biracial people have to like get scolded. We get the dunce hat and put in the corner for throwing our jello bowl, but they're allowed to just destroy the room. And that's where we are as a society. I mean, I grew up in the ghetto too when we had some fathers there and some were, and some mothers there and some were. It wasn't all the way across the spectrum like that. Not everybody fits that narrative. I don't know. Every time they make these arguments, not everybody, not everybody, not everybody. It's the stupidest argument. That's why I said I'm speaking on where I'm from. Okay. And so everybody that you were around were pretty much savage. Yeah. Hell yeah. You do realize it's about survival. It is about survival. Okay. It's always been about survival. And a lot of these people not that aware. you have woken up mm. are probably in the projects right now listening to you right. and want that knowledge. And y'all, he um, he's telling the truth on that. A lot of times when um, these women see you as weak, they see you as weak. I don't know why the video all of a sudden slowed down and why Tommy's looking like that. He looked like he ready to cry. <laughs> he must've been going through something when this video was made. I didn't even recognize it back then, I don't think. <laughs> And they will play you as weak. To hear this man say he grew up like that, then why did he ever, ever, ever start saying the black woman is God? Why did he say that in the first place? Remember, guys, he didn't say he learned this as an adult. He said it in the beginning because he was trying to get on. And he knew that his ability to gain a following was going to be easy if he uplifted the people that needed, I guess, the most affirmations. You and also keep in mind that he was, you know, probably a, a regular income person at the time. He probably didn't have a million dollars. And so the women that he was going to be exposed to, the women that he was going to easily be able to sleep with were probably black women because he didn't have a lot of money. Now that he's got money, his options are pretty much whatever, beautiful women, you know, exotic women, women from overseas, you know, uh, Italian women and, you know, Indian women with the long hair, you know, that our women buy. Like, literally, he can go and get the women who grow the hair that we buy. You know what I'm saying? So now he ain't got to feed the ego of a black woman. He's trying to make sure he feeds the ego of who he's going to be able to attain at this point. And like I said, it probably was just a money grab in the beginning and a pussy grab. Let's call it what it is. He was trying to be able to probably sleep with black women back then. Now, like I said, he's more exposed to other types of women. That's old news. He don't want no black baby mama anymore. He, he claims he never slept with a white woman. Like I said, I don't believe that. I believe he's probably slept with quite a few different types of women now that he's had over a million dollars. Got a group of people who claim that the world hates them and don't find them attractive and beat them down. So if you have the opposite of that out there, of course, when they hear it, they're gonna just build them all the way up. Like, oh my God, somebody who actually likes us, <laughs> you know? So they're gonna sit there and be like, oh my God, yeah, let's put this guy on a pedestal. And then he gets on the pedestal and then he starts crapping on you. I wonder how the black woman who followed him in the beginning, like, how do you feel about that now? Like knowing that you went from being God to being just this toxic person that he just smashed, impregnated and kicked you know left for for nothing you know you're just you're just one of the many chicks that he's willing to sleep with at this point like it's awfully funny how that works but yeah continue mr sotomayor he said he learned that as a kid every story i told he now turn around and tells that story so if you knew this why would you lie why would you try to fight someone try to harm or get other people to harm a black man that's actually telling the truth But as my song said, they get it coming and going. 
They get it in one breath where they just sit there and tell black women how great they are to get it started. Then they do it the other way. They get it both sides. But they will not come back and say, this was the first man that just stood up, put his face out there and said, no, this is a problem. You want to pinpoint what the problem is? Here it is. But we won't talk about it. Yeah, I might be a sellout for saying it, but a whole, whole lot of black men have started to listen to me and they started to mimic me. But I'm persona non grata around these parts. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to let y'all go. Well, I don't know about you guys, but that was enough for me today as well. Definitely leave me a comment and tell me what you think, and I will see you next time. I watched that whole 19, 20 second video, and I was yet to hear the part where I said black women were toxic. I'm pretty sure it was everyone else in the video who said it. In fact, I want to say I even came to the defense of some black women, the, the baby mothers of young Pharaoh, trying to convince women who may be in those footsteps right now, like instead of being the baby mama, have a little chase, have a little chastity for yourself, require a ring before you become pregnant. Uh, understand that when a guy comes up, he's just going to look at you as the baby mama and keep it moving and probably be embarrassed about the fact that he slept with you and got you pregnant because when he's exposed to higher caliber women, women who are from the upper echelons of life, women who are more high value than you, uh, he's going to be embarrassed about the fact that that's his baby mama. How many stories have we seen that? Rags to riches type of dudes. Look, look at all the famous people's first woman. You know, they're, they're so average, they're so busted and disgusted, and then they get into the limelight, they get some millions, and now all of a sudden they're only dating tens. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, again, if we saw ourselves as more valuable, then people wouldn't be able to crap on us the way that they do. And I had to get to the point where I was like, yeah, I messed up, I became a baby mama. And when I realized that lowered my value in the sexual marketplace value, it kind of just, in the sexual marketplace, I'm sorry, it, it opened up my eyes and said that now I have to come twice as hard. Now I gotta make sure I cook, I clean, I'm a submissive wife, I'm a good person, I listen to my husband, I have to do all the things that we're so against in the beginning because we're so independent and we're women, we make our own money, we do what we want, we call the shots. But if you wanna be a, a wife and you wanna have that husband there helping you raise those kids, you're gonna have to find your place as the woman. And not necessarily like, oh, you know, I let my man crap on me or anything, it's just that there's a reason that these other, other races you know, constantly get married and they, they're not known for being a ghetto baby mama and, and, and having bad attitudes. There's a reason that they're that they're known for that. They're known for being the epitome of what a wife should be. Like for instance, an Asian woman. Think about most of the characteristics that they have. They have good quality family values. They're for the most part modest in the way that they dress. In fact, you go overseas and you see the way the women dress, they don't dress like we do. You know, they're not walking around in streetwear, unless of course they're street walkers or something. But for the most part, the average everyday woman is not looking like she's stepping down the club scene everywhere that she goes, like we do as black women. And it's not all, it's definitely not all. But you do have some of us who get even to a certain age and still don't even realize that, you know, covering your chest a little bit is okay. You're over 50, no one wants to see your never ending neckline. You know what I'm saying? Like. But yeah, you guys tell me what you think. Was I being racist in this video? Was I calling black women toxic? Or was I actually defending black women and coming correct and saying things and information that ain't gonna do nothing but help people? I mean, at the end of the day. Tell me what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you made it this far. Leave me that blue heart and I will see you next time.